Well, maybe you saw it last week. CEOs from top social media companies were being grilled on Capitol Hill last week. It's really powerful from the parents' perspective of this. The main message is that companies aren't doing enough to protect kids. Join the conversation today, our parenting expert, Dr. Cheryl Ziegler. So um, these parents were holding these photos of their children that have ended their lives. It was, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. Is there anything being done at all by any of these companies to kind of put safety measures in place? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, Meta has rolled out new parenting control features. The problem is you have to figure it out and find it, and it's not easy. So that's what they're doing. Some of the other ones are putting on, you know, maybe a reminder that says, like, you've been on for X amount of time. Maybe you should take a break. You know, so there's those little things that are going on, but definitely nearly not enough. Not nearly enough. Like most things, it reminds me of sports, where right? I always think that uh, performance-enhancing drugs were always ahead of drug testing. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I do get the same feeling here that whatever they're trying to do is already being navigated around oh. by, by most kids, especially. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I think that most kids can figure out how to turn off those kind of sensors and parental advisories. And so, you know, I think the, the hearing was astonishing in terms of seeing all of these CEOs and they're tr they were there to try to pass a child safety online bill. They can't do it. And so you only have X, formerly known as Twitter, and you have Snapchat that said, okay, we'll go, we'll, we will support it. And then the other three CEOs saying, we're not supporting this. So it feels really hopeless in terms of having those companies and those CEOs truly value this, take this in. And the most appalling thing was Mark Zuckerberg saying, we have found no causal link between the youth mental health crisis and social media. That's just appalling. You as a professional probably find that irritating. Absolutely. We have, we have a lot of research. We have our Surgeon General calling this a public health crisis. I mean, how can you really, truly ignore all of that? And the key word there, maybe for a statistician or researcher, is causal. Right. Sometimes things aren't causal, but they're highly correlated, right? Yeah. And it takes a while to say, yes, this directly causes. But you, what are you going to wait, 10, 20 years so you can say that? You know, we know. It's like saying tobacco, well, how long did it take to prove that it caused cancer? But in the meantime, if you're waiting for that, we've got real kids getting bullied, getting, you know, the sextortion stuff is really big, really very serious things happening online. And these companies are just getting away with it. And I thought the other amazing thing was that they had this youth advocacy group wearing the number 270 on there. And these leaked papers or found papers from Meta basically said that's how much they think a teen user is worth over their lifetime, wow. $270, you know? And so um, just, you know, people saying this is just appalling. Like they really look at these kids as a product. When you talk about this, I mean, and I'm struck because a lot of people talk about, you know, well, I, I don't let my child do this until their age, whatever. Yet I always hear, like, the brain is not really even fully developed until 25 or something like right. that. Right. So if you're starting on social media at 17, it can have just as damaging of an impact. Yes, but the most vulnerable are the younger you start and any predisposition to mental health or any current existing mental health issues. Those are the people that are most vulnerable because sometimes you can put two kids or even two siblings next to each other and one of them kind of has some moderate use and they can put it down and they have other things yeah, in their life. Interesting. And other yeah. kids, it could be a sibling, is they're just a, truly addicted to it. And it really is, I think, along that continuum of addiction. Some people can have a drink and there's no problem. Somebody else, they become addicted. And so we're really looking at social media along. So what do topics. parents do then? I mean, I think you got to wait as long as possible to get your kids on social media. You have to know what they are looking at. You have to look at their For You page. I always say, if you don't understand social media, just look at sort of their home page because what it does, it's an algorithm and it'll feed what they are searching. Oh yeah, relentlessly. So even if you're, you don't think your kid's being honest, oh, I'm just looking up sports things, just go, oh, okay, can I see your For You page? Because you will see in 20 seconds what exactly they've been looking for. So those that follow them, know their passwords in the beginning. There's monitoring apps that you can get that are you know, third party to recognize these things. And at first I didn't know if those things were necessary, but the deeper we get into this, I do think the more supervision, the better. And some of those things may be tough to, to get a kid to share with you, but you're going to have to do it. You're you gonna do, have, yes, you're yes. You're going to have to figure out how to you're do it. You're in charge. You're the boss, right? Yeah. Absolutely. You got to protect them. Just the, the rules. Think of it as a seatbelt is the way you have to think. Like, would you let your kid drive without a seatbelt? That is the way you have to think about social media. All right. Well, thanks as always. Good to talk with you. Dr. Cheryl Ziegler.